Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to solve two numericals on the methods which are used to find the average rainfall data. So let's start. The first problem it states that find the mean precipitation for the area which is sketched in the figure by the Thiessen method. That means it is telling about the Thiessen polygon method. Then the area is composed of a square plus an equilateral triangular plot of side 4 km. That means the side of the triangle that is 4 km as well as the side of the square that is also the 4 km. The rainfall readings in centimeters at the various stations are also given in the figure. So, as you can see, these are the total six stations that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. These six stations are marked with the different rainfall readings. Now, the first step in the Thiessen polygon method is to connect the adjacent stations by straight lines which has been already done. After that the next step is to draw the perpendicular bisectors of the sides which are joined. So the perpendicular bisector between station 1 and 5 will be this blue line then correspondingly between 4 and 5 this line between 1 and 4 this will be somewhat like this. So these three will be meeting at a single point. Then correspondingly for 1 and 2 there will be certain bisector. Similarly for 3 and 4 then for 2 and 3. Now between 1 and 6 the perpendicular bisector will also be drawn. So that will be like this. This will be the perpendicular bisector and if you add up them or extend them then this area somewhat like this will be obtained. Now the next step is that in each of the area there must be at least one rain gauge station. So for the area which is encompassed by this shape the rain gauge encompassed is the fifth one. Then this is the another area which is shown with the green color. So the area that is possessed by the bisectors that is having the rain gauge station marked as one. That is within this area. Then similarly within this area the rain gauge station marked as two is present. Then in the third area the rain gauge present is this marked as 3 and so this is this area that is encompassed by and possessing the fourth station then rest of the area that is under the readings given by the sixth station so we are having all the areas because of these polygons so the shapes that we are obtaining that is representing these polygons now let me just name them so that there is no confusion regarding this. So let's say this is A, then this is B, then this is C, this is D. Okay, and this is E, F, G, and then H. Now in triangle ABC and this another triangle which is in front. Now we already know that according to the Thiessen polygon method this average rainfall that is given by P1 into A1 plus P2 into A2 up to the nth station that is Pn into An divided by the sum of all the areas that is A1 plus A2 up to An. Now we are having the six stations. Corresponding to these six stations, we are having the readings of the precipitation that is P1, then P2, similarly up to P6. 
these readings are already with us. What we need to calculate is the respective areas. So we do not know the areas. So that is what is A1, then A2. These areas are not known to us. So for that, we will be using the or we will be seeking the help of the basic geometry. So we know that the area of the triangle and especially of the equilateral triangle. So if we are talking about the triangle that is having all the sides as equal, that is nothing but the equilateral triangle. So the area that is given by the formula that is root 3 by 4 into a square, where a is the side of the triangle. We know that the side of the triangle that is is equal to 4 kilometers. So placing that value here, so the area of triangle that we are getting that is, is equal to 6.93 square kilometer. That is the value of the area of the triangle. Now this area when we have drawn the perpendicular bisector on these three sides of the triangle, it has divided the triangle into three equal parts. So this is the first part of the triangle then this is the second part of the triangle and the remaining one is the third part of the triangle so corresponding to the area 5 that is the area which is covered by the fifth ring gauge station that is one third of the area of the triangle and if we divide that we will get the result as 2.3 square kilometer. That is the area for the fifth station. For the sixth station that we are having, we know that the perpendicular bisector is drawn. So obviously this side, the remaining one, the total side was of 4 kilometers. So this will be of 2 kilometers. Similarly, this will also be of 2 kilometers. So this hypotenuse side, that means this distance, that will be is equal to 2 root 2 kilometers. And the area covered by this rhombus shape, which is obtained by joining the bisector points of all the sides of the square, that is having the dimension of 2 root 2 kilometers. Therefore, the area covered by the sixth ring gauge that is of 2 root 2 square. And from here, if we carry out the calculations, that comes out to be 8 square kilometers. Now we need to calculate the area covered by this. A2 and A3, um, both of these areas are equal. Let me just highlight that. So the A2 area is this much and A3 area is this much. So both of them are equal. So A2 area that is is equal to A3 area. That is is equal to half into 2 into 2. That is basically is equal to 2 square kilometer. The only thing that is remaining that is the area A1 and A4 and both of them are equal to each other. Now this A1 and A4 is comprising of a portion of the triangle and a portion of the square. The portion of the triangle that is possessed by this A1 that is one third of the triangle and the area of the square which is possessed by a1 that is also 1 by 2 into 2 into 2 that is is equal to 2 square kilometer therefore area a1 which is is equal to a4 that is is equal to one third of the triangle area plus half into 2 into 2 that portion of the square so one third area of the triangle that is is equal to 2.3 plus from here it is again 2. Therefore 
a1 is equal to a4 that is is equal to 4.3 square kilometer now what we need to calculate here just simply the mean rainfall by placing all the values which are given to us so the mean precipitation that will be equal to p1 into a1 so coming back to the original diagram so the precipitation at first station that is 4.8 centimeters for 2 it is 13 then 8 then 5.4 and 3.2 and 9.4 so this value is 4.8 into the area of the first station that is 4.3 plus the rainfall at the second station that was 13 centimeter into the area is 2 square kilometers plus the rainfall at the third one that is is equal to 8 into the precipitation is 8 centimeter into the area is 2 square kilometers plus 5.4 is the rainfall at the fourth station and the area is 4.3 then the rainfall is 3.2 at the fifth station and the area is 2.3 then last station is of 9.4 into the area is 8 square kilometer now dividing it by the entire area that is 4.3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 4.3 plus 2.3 plus 8 now from here if we carry out the calculation the mean precipitation that comes out to be equal to 7.36 centimeters hence the mean precipitation over the area which is composed of a square and a triangular plot that is having the mean rainfall of 7.36 centimeter that completes the first problem moving on to the next one which is stating that the ISO heights due to a storm in a catchment area were drawn and the area of the catchment bounded by the ISO heights are given below. What we need to estimate is the mean rainfall due to this storm. So the respective ISO heights are given and the area encompassed by these ISO heights that is also given. So let's say this is the random shaped area. So obviously the method that we are going to use to estimate the mean rainfall that is the isoheitel method. So if the method is not mentioned, we need to assess the method which will be used in this particular question. So obviously the data was given regarding the isoheights. That's why we will be using the isoheitel method. Otherwise, if nothing is mentioned or as such, then we will use the simplest method, which is the arithmetic mean method. Now, the first ISO height that is given as station 12 and the area is encompassed by this single ISO height. So that is possible only if the ISO height is closing on itself. So that is the 12th ISO height, which is encompassing the area of 80 square kilometer then the next iso height will be of 10 centimeter and the area between 10 and 12 that is 140 then the next iso height that is of 8 centimeter and the area between them that is 80 square kilometer then the next iso height is of 6 centimeter and the area between them is 180 square kilometer then the next iso height will be 4 centimeter and the area between them that is 20 now what area is encompassed so i've told you in the iso method that when the iso height is outside the station in that case we will take the catchment boundary so this 20 square kilometer that is up to the catchment boundary only now nothing is left in this problem what we need to imply is the mean precipitation and 
for that the relation is to be calculated so that is p average into the area between the two iso heights respectively for all the station and summing up all of them divided by summation of all the areas so one by one for the iso height of 12 cm we are having the area encompassed as 80 then between 12 and 10 cm so we will take the average of that that is 12 and 10 divided by 2 into the area between them of 140 square kilometers plus the area encompassed between 10 and 8 centimeter iso height so average of them into the area between them plus the average of the iso heights of 8 and 6 into the area between them that is 180 plus the next iso height in this case the iso height was 6 and 4 but since this 4 iso height that is outside the catchment boundary in that case we will not count that and the last iso height that is counted as 6 only corresponding to which the area is 20 square kilometers divided by the entire area which is the first one is 80 plus 140 then again 80 plus 180 plus 20 so from here if we carry out the calculation that is 960 plus 12 and 10 the average will be 11 so it will give us as 1540 plus 9 into 80 that is 720 plus this will be 1260 plus 120 divided by this value will be 220 plus 80 that is 300 plus 20 that will give us as value 500 so so the mean precipitation that we will get from here that comes out to be equal to as 9.2 centimeter so within this catchment area if we take the average precipitation that comes out to be equal to 9.2 centimeters so that completes the numerical on both the type of the methods in the arithmetic mean method we will simply take the average of all the data that has been given to us now in the next video we will look at the methods with the help of which we can find out the rainfall data which have not been recorded by the rain gauges. Thank you.